<laughs> the boy the boys season four episodes five and six what did you think overall i'm happy with the direction that they're going in right now uh after four after yes. five and six um i feel like i feel like uh for me we got two episodes left i feel like we're in a good place i feel like i like maybe we should have been a little further along in some cases by the end of episode six. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get into some of those as we go through. Overall, I like where we're at right now, especially when we know that there's going to be a season five. We know that like not mm -hmm. all of the loose ends are going to be tied up, but for I think we're in a good place for right now in season four. How about you? How do you feel? Um, I didn't love it. Um, to be honest with you, uh, there were times where I just like kind of zoned out and would start like scrolling. It's gory, it's political, it's gross, um, but it's just lacking the fun. I'm just not, I'm just not feeling this season. Really? Um, I also think the writing kind of sucks too. There are I feel some, like there the are jokes some writing are calls. like a little too, yeah, I feel like the jokes are too on the nose um, and uh, they're just uh, too obvious. And I just feel like the characters are like cartoonishly evil now uh, as compared to before where there would be kind of subtle indications of evil before it just became like flat out. Um, so for instance, if we're comparing like, and I know Stormfront was a bigger uh, character than Tech Knight, but Tech Knight's been on a, had a season with Gen V and made an appearance on this show. And, but it was like, with Stormfront, she was a Nazi, right? But, like, she didn't just come out and say she was a Nazi. Like, there was a build-up to it. And there was, like, a lot of subtle digs and a lot of, like, you know, comments that she made that kind of indicated that something was off about her before you get the full-blown thing. Now, I understand that Tech Knight didn't have uh, the time to build up to it. But it's like, okay, your, your parents... Uh, ran the prison system and they were like slave catchers and you're just like out and out proud of it and you're making comments to a train about how they would have caught him it's like it's just too much dude like there are real people who exist in the world i'm sure who are rich because their ancestors were slave traders i don't doubt that for a second but they're not going around making jokes to black people about how ancestors would have caught them how you know sorry but like, when, when, when's the last time you talked to a, a descendant of a slave catcher that has a lot of money in a prison? I'm, I mean, perhaps when your shit don't stink for generations, you think you can get away with talking to people that way. Because I have met plenty of people that said shit that's like, why would you say that to somebody? They do exist. I, I'm not. Yeah, that's I'm, fair. I, I, As I'm saying I, it, I believe that there are that's fair. tech knights in this world. I don't think that like, it's a it's a character and a person personality that we don't come across often in our lives, but they do exist. Yeah. I mean, Do Donald Donald Sterling exists. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's just like just out in the open like that. I guess he was that rich and that cocky that he felt like he could say it. I guess as I'm saying it, I'm like reconsidering my words. Um, I just but I understand I the sentiment. Subtlety. Like I sure. Say, say something, make a dig at A-Train, but make it more subtle. Like, it's just, it's too cartoonishly evil. Yeah, I got you. Like, definitely um, some of the dialogue is a little lazy in, in those instances. <laughs> there were a couple of things that were, that were like, I don't want to say, yeah, maybe a little out of place. They felt jarring because it felt like, why is that here? Like, you know, the chick yelling at Starlight. It's like, what, what, what does that yeah. have to do with, what does that have to do with where they're going? Yeah, yeah, the chick yelling at the, yeah person yelling at star starlight the um there's like a politician who's talking to newman about abortion and like there's a joke about how she wants her head to explode but it's like it's just not landing dude like why are we why are we bringing these political issues into the show like if we want to talk about vot and corporate greed go for it but why are we bringing in all these like miscellaneous political hot button issues into it like and do don't get me wrong, like politically, I think I line up with the show's creator, Eric Kripke, like pretty much 100% based on what I'm seeing on the show. 
but I still don't want it like in my face when I'm trying to like enjoy myself and have a good time. Um, you sound also, like, like uh, if you're going to do it, do it in a way. Uh, I was gonna say you sound you sound like um a few years back when the NFL had the you know players that were taking a knee and you know protesting, and there was a lot of discourse uh, of people saying like I don't want to watch my sports and have politics in it. Like that was a big part of the uh, conversation at that time. People were very turned off by the NFL. People were swearing to never watch the National Football League again because they don't want these politics in their sports. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, you're saying that uh, this show, like this is, you're saying the same thing, basically, like you don't want your any politics in this thing right here that is your escapism. Sports is an escapism for a lot of people. They didn't like that crossover. And, and the boys and shows like this are escapism for, for us. And that's probably like, you know, I, I get why you would feel that way. Like I'm here for, to escape the bullshit of every day. Why are you bringing it here to my calm, my happy place? So I would say the difference is abortion has never come up on the show. Like it's not part of the plot. Like it, in the NFL, there are black players. They get affected by like, police brutality and violence and so i would say it's relevant to the nfl to take a stand on behalf of their black players um which they didn't do and so the i think the players had the right to take a stand um but like the the thing is abortion was never a topic on the show like they say in this season that stewie and starlight had an abortion but they never showed it they they they're just bringing it up in retrospect so why are you why i guess is my question what's the point other than someone used it as like a political pawn against starlight it's just um it, it's just poor writing in my opinion to just like and again if they showed stewie and starlight's abortion and it had some relevance to the plot and then you bring up all these political, you know, all the political ramifications. I would say go for it. It still seems kind of irrelevant, but like, okay, at least there's some like sort of coherence. But to just to throw it in out of nowhere doesn't make any sense to me at all. Okay, I I, I see where you're coming from there, and I agree with that perspective. For, like, yeah, no doubt. And even when you brought up the tech, uh, the tech night thing that's also relevant there too it's like tech knight has been a character that we've known about for gen v and now this season why is it we just found out in this episode that he came from money if that was such an important plot point right. why are we just finding out that he's a racist and that he comes from money and and owns the prison system like that just kind of felt like it came out of nowhere which then makes the a train thing feel even more forced so yeah like if you want to look at those two plot points uh like they didn't do the work to get us to where that to where we care that actually makes sense it, it's almost like you know like you said it happened off screen and they're trying to tell us that this is important but you should have showed us that this was important then we can have these conversations so i agree with you 100 yeah, percent on that yeah also, no you're right 100 yeah Definitely. We're on the same page. Also, like, A-Train, okay, how many more episodes do we have to see of, like, A-Train being, like, like, people being racist to A-Train? Like, I get it at this point, but, like, I just, not to say that he doesn't deserve it, it just seems, like, incongruous with, like, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Like, the crime was he killed women, right? Like, he killed his girlfriend, he killed Stewie's girl. Uh, Stewie's girlfriend mm -hmm. but then like I don't know it just like uh, th they're punishing the character but like the way that they're punishing the character I'd like to see some sort of connection with th the actual thing that he did um, it's not necessary but it would be nice um, I thought that the most hilarious part of these two episodes uh, was A-Train saving mm and like taking him to the hospital putting him on the gurney and then there's that little black boy and his parent or whatever and like they had that moment of like just staring at him. i was like this is y'all are really 
They, they, I, you're I really laying it. it on thick. I I didn't get it, dude. So what? So he's like a he even with all the bullshit, like he's still a a role model to black kids everywhere. Yeah, it's like you know he actually makes a real save and is witnessed by a black kid and and he's having his whole moment. You know, it's like, you know, come on, Adrian, Wait. chill, chill oh, the fuck what? out. Sitting there and, and savoring that moment. Also, he wasn't like a again. He wasn't like a self hating black guy in the beginning. Like he didn't. Like, yeah, but he I, got least... called out last season. He got called out last season for you know not really being for the cause. You know, not really being about what he said. He you know what he was the, what he was putting out to the masses, especially when he switched his suit to that whole you know fucking Wakanda outfit. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like he went through that whole phase of, you know, trying to be down. That's why his brother was like, you know, cut ties with him because he wasn't sure. really, you know, and then here he is and he's actually accident to accidentally doing it. And it's like, it's too late. Like, what are you doing? Like, but I just thought it was hilarious. It's like, that's, you know, kind of like in the Marvel movie in, uh, in in game when they had all the females, all the females, that sounds ridiculous. All the chicks, uh, team up at the end to try to get the gauntlet across the battlefield and the way they shot it it was like you know very overtly like oh it's the woman power moment it's all the chicks teaming up to do this thing and it, that's it was like it was two on the nose and same thing with a train in that moment right there it was like oh uh, y'all are teasing it up a little bit for me it's hilarious yeah. it is hilarious that you know he really thinks he's redeemed himself now uh, yeah so now that you bring that up it does remind me of like season two where um, Storm finds like previous persona Liberty like stops um, a kid in a car and then like mm -hmm. a black kid in a car and like kills him because he's black. Yep. Like you said, just very cartoon. Like even at that time and uh, season two is my favorite season, but like th that scene just felt too just cartoonish. And I don't know, too simplistic, I would say. And also just like, I don't know. It was just like, just too much of a bummer to watch. Like, these are things that you have to kind of be smart about. And I just felt like it was just too, it, it like it wasn't handled well. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it, it, those things, I noticed them, but they didn't hamper uh, my viewing experience for these last two episodes. Uh, I did notice them. I did, I did, you know, smirk at them. Like, I see what you're doing here. Um, but it didn't take away from... I mean, even... Listen. We have flying sheep in, in episode five. And I was like, yeah, that's wild. I'm, I'm willing to stay on the ride. There's a couple storylines that I had to get off the ride on. But overall, the, those points that you brought up that are very valid, and I do see where you're coming from... Uh, I still, even with that being said, I still enjoy uh, episodes five and six, uh, except for Frenchie, like, I... and, and, and Colin, can, like, can we just get the Frenchie part out the way real quick? At, like right now, can we just get Frenchie out the way so we don't have to bring him up anymore? I mean, they did get him out of the way. He's in jail. So that's, how do you feel about nice. that? He's off our screens for one episode. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with it. Keep him off our screen. I don't care. Uh, I said before the season started that I don't care about him and I stay firm on that. Uh, at at this point, I think that he needs to be he needs to be gone for a little bit so maybe we can get a reset on on Frenchie. Cuz and it's weird. It's like, you know, it's not like it's not like the recording this week to week so that they're hearing the discourse that people are a little tired of Frenchie. Uh, so maybe maybe they knew or had a, had an inkling that maybe people aren't may not go along with this storyline. So let's get it. just write write Frenchie out for a little bit. I don't know if that was the case, but I'm glad that we don't really have to deal with a lot of the Frenchie shit outside of Kimiko going over and not being able to see him. And that was heartbreaking. And she was all I have nowhere else to go. I was like, come on, girl, like. Somebody, let's get her some side, some side dick or something. We gotta hook Kimiko up. She's she's too good for this. I mean, apparently she did in the first or second episode. She was like, "Frenchie, you need to go out and like explore your options." I'm sleeping around, which again uh, you, you, was a dumb you believed conversation. Her? I, I I didn't care enough to really get into it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't she? Have, 
doesn't she have that gang to kill? Like she sh- she should be going off and doing that. <laughs> Seriously, like she does have options. She has like, and and I think that that story is far more interesting. And I would really like to see like them. Yeah. I I, I wish they would have yeah, like where girl, where is that? that? Yeah, like what is going on there? Like where that girl that she like captured and like destroyed her life, but like right now that girl's in the gang and she's out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. I, I want to see, see I, I want to see her like trying to take down this terrorist group, you know? Like why why I think that's a way better story than Colin and Frenchie. Yeah, dude. Dude, they better not forget about that storyline. I'll be pissed if there's I no hope resolution not. to that cuz the season is winding down fast, so we need to have at least one fight scene between those two girls. And if if that's something that's going to be carried over to season five like i don't i don't see any reason why that story should be carried over to season five because they could have if, right. if with better time management they could have went through that story this season very easily right right yeah I, I i don't get it um yeah huey's mom um what 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 the fuck i don't okay, okay. i was really expecting something juicy with huey's mom and i'm just waiting for it I was waiting for some conspiracy where she worked for Vought and she had too much information, so uh, she, she had to go into hiding or, or something like that, something juicy, something interesting related to the plot, and I'm just not getting it, and I'm so frustrated. Uh, I think it's, I think it's the other way. I think that... Uh... That she's a spy for Vought. She she was their end to their group. She's the eyes on you know, she's keeping an oh, eye she on. She better Stewie. fucking be. She better like, fucking be to make this all worth it. But like since we're like let's talk about the Huey story over the last two episodes. The the story arc that dude's had, had yeah. from the from his dad coming back from death, and then murdering a bunch of people in a hospital by accident yeah, and then turning into like a freaking horror film where he's chasing Daphne. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, and, and going from that to then, you know, making sure that his dad wasn't Jar Jar having to put his own, he had to kill his own dad. And then, then the next episode, he's wearing a stinky spider suit getting his feet tickled and you know in some old S and M stuff. Like he yeah. Okay. So my only question with the dad is like how was he allowed to just like peacefully be put down like after he just killed like three people? Were weren't there like cops all up in that building? Like how is how did they just like find a room with a gurney, put him on and like how did they have time to do that? I mean, you could see the people running in the window in the background, so they were looking. They just weren't looking well. Look, there's people that are bad at their jobs in every industry, and clearly that hospital was full of people that were bad at searching. Yeah, especially if there was a window, so they could just look in <laughs> and see the guy. <laughs> I mean, that come just on, this... killed, like, multiple people. And, yeah, like... but this dude... This dude's pulling out hearts. And Do then, you like, really want to be the one that finds him? Like, I don't want to find the guy that's pulling hearts out like it's Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Like, I don't want that. I, look, I, yeah. It was funny with that, like, one of the patients was, like, hitting on the nurse. So then it was, like, funny when he died. And I was like, I don't, I don't think he deserved all that. Like, maybe he was being a little creepy, but I don't think he deserved to have his heart but I, I, out. Or I, I think she was into in it. Place. Yeah, he got walked all the way into that. But yeah, I think he had a shot. I he, know. he had a shot. <laughs> it was the beginning of a rom com and it ended. I know. You know what? It's, it's, it's funny, though, because it's like um, that dude died just like Sarah died. Like, Huey's dad killed this guy in front of this chick while, you know, he's trying to get his Mac on the same way uh, uh, Huey oh, lost Sarah. I feel like her name's not Sarah, but I see your point. It is. Exactly. It is today. Her day. Her name is Sarah today. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, um, sir. Yo, R.I.P. Sarah. You know what I'm saying? And all the drama your death has brought. 
Her death has brought down empires. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but um, so with his with his mom, yeah. like I, that has to be it. Like she has to be a mole, uh, like a a deep level mole, it has to be. Because if not, then. And and if the last time we see her, this was a week. Was but yeah, it's like it's almost it's Colin's level. It's Colin level of why do we need this side story or this part of the side story. You know, Frenchie could have dealt yeah, with guilt yeah. from all of the murders he's done without Colin. He could have he could have ended up in the same place he's in right now in a jail because he turned himself in without the Colin story. We could have gotten to the same spot. And if if Huey's mom is not a deep seated mole, then for either the CIA or for Vought, then then we could have got to we could have got to all this shit without her. His dad could have just died. You know? Yeah. Like um, so I mean, there, like, there better be a good reason. Yeah. There there's a compassionate part of me that like, you know, is like, damn, hasn't Huey been through enough this season? But there's the, the the fan in me is like, fuck yeah, she has to be a mole, dude. Like do something with her, please. Dude, what happens to Huey if his mom is a mole? The dad Nothing. If if Huey's mom turns I out mean, to be a mole, that dude's gonna break. He's gonna break. Yeah, he is. He is. Like he's gonna snap if his Perfect if his mom. Is, dude, like what is what is unhinged, Huey? Because wouldn't it be odd? Like, okay, hear me out. What if mm -hmm. what's happening to Huey is his origin story for him becoming the next next butcher? Um, like he's going yeah, through all maybe. this bullshit, I, all this bullshit that's going to like kill him and eat him up on the inside. All this shit is numbing him. And, and if he chooses violence, it can't, it, uh, I could see a way that, you know, maybe once upon a time, Butcher was very, well, no, Butcher was always an asshole, but, <laughs> but still this yeah. could make, this could be the type of, you yeah. know, series of events that can turn a very mild mannered good-hearted person into a very cold diabolical person but i mean didn't they already kind of like explore that last season with huey where he like goes and takes the temp b with butcher like i, I i'd be yeah I, I don't know i feel like that's not i mean i feel like that wouldn't be very good writing for them to like do that he recovers and then like he recovers from whatever he was going through last season and then th they do it to him again like it has to be something different this time these are the same people that you have just accused for the last 30 minutes of being lazy with their writing it's very yeah, possible that's true <laughs> that's true everything everything it's is in the realm of possibility that. Uh, it's, how are yeah, you feeling? How are you feeling about Starlight story right now? I I'm down on Starlight. I'll, I'll I'll start with that. Her stock with me has gone down tremendously over the last two episodes. Uh, she peaked with right, beating down Firecracker. Um, right. what's happened with Starlight? Uh, they they wrote all the baby killer and all that stuff inside of her building. Uh, right. her powers, her powers aren't working right. right. She's having issues with that. Uh, punch the shit out of Victoria Newman right in the mouth. And then, and then the whole thing with Huey in episode six and, you know, finding him and then Huey telling her like, I'm not okay. Uh, that's where she's at now, but she's, she just she's kind of unhinged. Right. Say that again. Yeah. I, yeah, she just gives him a hug, right? Like that was right. basically she saves him and she gives him a hug. Yeah. Um that I don't I don't know. I mean, it's just so crowded. Like you we just don't have space for everybody. So oh, hold on. Wait. They gave her yes. like Hold on. His mom is a spy. She gave him that oh, engagement hi. ring. She gave him that engagement ring. I bet you but oh, that engagement ring but... was a, has a has a has a bug or something in it. Remember, she gave him the ring. Oh. 
fuck, dude. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh my god, he was gonna implode. He's gonna fucking snap, dude. She gave him that oh, ring, shit. and I, and I bet you that ring has a fucking bug or a tracking or something in it. Oh, I love that. Oh my god, give it to me. If that, Straight if we're getting that, then yeah, if we're getting that, then come on. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bring it on. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. We cracked yeah, the code. These... We cracked the code. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, that makes me mildly optimistic for these last three episodes. Last two episodes. Two episodes. Last two episodes. Wait, we're on. Si this is five and six, right? Yeah. Yes. Last two episodes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm down with that. Maybe like that's a cliffhanger going into season five. Is that that ring right there? Something. But uh, yeah, I just feel like Starlight's uh, stock is just like her. She's not nearly as powerful as she was, and I feel like her importance is diminishing. Like the after the beatdown, they've kind of like she feels weaker now as a character. And not just because of her powers, but the fact that she can't even, you know, as Newman would say, uh, she can't get her shit together and, well, and just handle, think... right, you know, these these are stressful situations, but damn it, she is choosing to handle them in the wrong way each time. To be fair to the character, though, now that you say, now that you mention that twist, um... I think the, these were just filler episodes, episodes four and five. Like, yes, yeah, Stewie's dad dies, but, like, it was kind of uh, anticlimactic. Um, I, like, it was sad, but it's, like, clearly that wasn't, like, the that wasn't going to be the end of... That wasn't important enough to say for the end of the season. I will say one thing about the boys is, like, they'll have a couple of, like, um, bangers at the beginning of the season, and then the last couple episodes are, like awesome but like they the middle ones tend to stagnate yeah yeah that can be said with gen v too so yeah uh yeah i agree with that for sure i think even last season i felt the same way last season absolutely uh season three absolutely sagged in the middle yeah yeah uh season two would have except i think stormfront was just so much fun she was just like such a bitch and she was so fun to hate that i think she she like single-handedly carried that whole season <laughs> um yeah yeah i think these were filler episodes okay well let's let's quickly look at the seven and where they are storyline wise we talked about a a train a bit do you think a train's gonna get caught oh he better i mean something's gotta happen something I hope he dies in a fun way, like a fun and satisfying way. You think he's dying season four? He has to. After that, after he had that long, overdrawn stare with that boy, he's got to die now. Yeah, because that was lame. So, adios. Yeah, just just die in a fun way. That's all I asked for. Just something fun. Honestly, if he died last season when he dragged that racist um down the road i'd have been fine i would have been fine been, yeah i would have been fine with that um so yeah something of that caliber would be great uh but i will say this guy has like oh. nine lives he does right like a train should have yeah. been dead a few times yeah he just will not go so who knows uh how are you feeling yes. with where the deep is right now not a lot of really anything happening with him besides he's gotten a little bit more like he's really eating this homelander shit up like this the whole violence wrathful gods thing uh considering he's a dude that doesn't have a lot of power when he's not in the water uh yes. he's he's eating he's eating this shit up he's um just such a loser i mean that that poor octopus dude like he, clean the tank somehow so yeah save save the octopus dude justice for what's her name andromeda or whatever sarah oh ambrosia ambrosia justice for ambrosia is it really ambrosia yeah justice for my girl ambrosia all right bet voiced yeah let's give it up for ambrosia voiced by tilda swinton uh octopus in the chats for 
<laughs> for for ambrosia. <laughs> <laughs> save, our girl, save our girl Ambrosia. <laughs> let's get some signs up. Let's get a picket line going. Save Ambrosia. Save Ambrosia. Uh, I think the deep's got to die, and I think he's got. I think I, I would like to see A Train and the Deep have to go against each other. Um. Yeah. Sure. I mean, they, they were about to late earlier in the season so why not <laughs> yeah uh you know what two birds one stone let them yeah. two Just we can get rid of both of them <laughs> yeah both of them both of them uh sage shot in the head and it was like oh i'm so glad that two episodes ago they told us that her brain regenerates but if you shoot her anywhere else in her body she would be dead and mm hits her with sniper precision in the damn temple and then he then he tries to die. Uh, <laughs> Poor MM. MM just can't get a win. He got hives. <laughs> <laughs> His daughter's tripping. This man. Everybody. It it just seems like everybody is having the worst time ever yeah. in this show. Um, Sage gets shot in the head, and I think she disappointed Homelander. And I don't know that. You know, with as volatile as he is right now, I think that he's looking at her in a different light now. Do you think she's safe? Um, hey, sorry. Um, can you hang on a second? I'm like hearing noises, and I think it's just the cats, but I need to check. Okay. Sorry. It was, yeah, it was just the cats. Um, what were you saying? Uh, is Sage safe after disappointing Homelander? Uh, because her brain wasn't operating properly after getting shot in the head. See, this is what I was saying, like, earlier this season. I was, she can't outsmart, like, brute strength. <laughs> brute strength and anger. I just, I just don't think she can do it and it's not her fault i just think like this world is is too fucked up for to be outsmarted did you buy the speech that she gave newman about how she uh, you know cured cancer and she could fix global warming but you know fuck these people um i did um but I will say, wouldn't it be hilarious if she was just like a normal person and was just like really confident and just giving them all this <laughs> all this advice that sounded right? Cause... She stayed at a, at a La Quinta Inn last night, and now she's all smart. <laughs> <laughs> she read a Wikipedia page, and now she's like, she knows everything. Because um, I feel like in reality, that's how most geniuses really are. <laughs> especially most self-styled geniuses um but no that's aside from the point i do think she actually is a genius um she obviously miscalculated with mm maybe uh, yeah honestly. but um yeah other than that i mean every other move she's made has been correct so what do you think and the she purpose was of her giving newman that pep talk um because newman ultimately did step up when when sage couldn't when sage was eating cake uh <laughs> eating cake like chris brown and rihanna uh I, I but think, newman damn, stepped up shut up that's a great shut up that song still bangs. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> oh whatever what a hater what a hater um uh okay so i think she just she wants to see newman fuck shit up like i think i feel like that was a moment of honesty for sage like she just okay. wants to see a, a woman in power just destroying everything because I, I i 
I felt that she was being genuine, but with her, it's like, I was like, D- does she really want to see Newman step up and wreck shit, or was she setting Newman up for some bullshit the same way she set up Firecracker? So with, with Sage, it's, there's always that little bit of, uh, I, I can't trust her wholeheartedly, because I know that she's smart enough to be trying to play chess right now. Well, but she's playing chess with someone who can actually play chess, like with okay. with firecracker that was checkers i mean that's that's that was less than checkers that was like monopoly there was no strategy to i mean firecracker is a joke so right. she treated her like a joke newman is like a substantial presence and so i think sage recognizes that in her i think she recognizes a kindred spirit um and someone of value um let's get to homelander and Ryan. Uh, actually, um, so episode five, we see them get uh, homeboy out of jail. His name is uh, escaping me right now. Episode but they get five. him out of uh, they get him out of jail, and he takes them to the country farmhouse where you know oh, Newman's yeah. dad, John, John Carlo. Yeah, yeah, John Carlo. Oh, Stan Edgar. There you go, Stan Edgar. Uh, they get him out of jail and we see the flying sheep and, uh, the rabbit with the tentacles coming out, uh, which is also probably what happened with, um, with butcher when he killed, uh, Ezekiel. That was probably those tentacles probably busted out of him. Um, but he, he's back now and we see them go through all the stuff on the farm. They're taking him back to jail and Newman springs him she kills the driver and takes him why because that's her daddy and she just lost her baby daddy so she's she's got like no one now i think that's all it was yeah just an emotional thing not a yeah and that might be a sign of weakness too that she's getting emotional now because this is the most emotional she's ever seen her i actually i'm i'm losing my affection for her because i liked her when she was just a cold-blooded like politician um but now she's like a mother and a daughter and a wife and whatever and i'm just like i don't i don't i don't love this for you um but yeah i i think she's kind of losing her edge a little bit can you explain what happened in that room so when she stands up when homelander doesn't have the plan and she stands up and she convinces that room full of people to get on her side and back her. Like she's talking about like, and uh, this is part of the politics that board that, that you disliked in the episode, but I just want to make sure that I understand. Like basically she just told the military and all these big corporations that they were, there was going to be no regulations on them when she takes over, if they invoke the 25th. Is yeah. that right? Um, look, I'm a little bit lost on, this as well so this conversation like they didn't get all these people together to talk about internment camps that was like that was a side plan i don't know what this uh, what this meeting was supposed to be about like was it about the internment camps whatever um yeah they had something they wanted to talk to all these rich people about that they homelander fumbled that so then Newman just stepped up and filled the air, I guess, with her voice and I guess sold herself to them. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. Sorry, we're not experts, um, but I, I don't know what they were all gathered so, in the room. To like I got to watch CNN to understand what just happened. Yeah. But I don't but, know. I don't feel like. But I don't feel like the original conversation really matters. I think the point is that, like, Newman is stepping up, uh, separating herself from her partner, stepping up as, like, this, you know, um, evil but sadly realistic politician who only serves the rich. Um, And then they find out about the side plot with internment camps. Like, I think those were the two big takeaways. In lieu of the events of episode five, it seemed like, like you know, she she was the sole 
proprietor, I suppose you could say, or owner of the virus that kills soups. And episode five ends with her losing that. This seemed like right. um, like this wasn't her plan. And and this was a pivot because since she lost the the virus, if this was a pivot last minute, then it was a good one for her uh, character. It was a good one for her character to, to find a way to you know acquire more power. But I don't know if it was the smartest move because now she's exposing herself more, especially when it comes out that she's a soup. Which it, it has to at some point. For sure. Yeah, this is all leading to um, a disaster for all parties involved. Um, yeah, she that and so that that intrigues me still. That keeps me very interested in 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 Victoria Newman, uh, because I think she's winging it. But like you said, she's. She's a 4D chess player. She is. So, so I think that she has the capabilities to wing it and figure this out and work it to her advantage. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't believe this was initially her plan to even go this route. So to see her now uh, pivot, I'm interested to see how... Like, I, she's definitely secured her safety for the rest of season four with this move. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there was no question that this woman is making it to the end of the series. Um, or at least to at least to season five, because she's just such a good character. Even shitty writing and carelessness is not bringing her down. Uh, let's be honest about it. Like, if I'm, I'm going to be honest, she is a great actress, right? I, I don't know yeah. what else she's done, but like, she makes you care. And I think a part of why um, the Frenchy side plot story this this season fell a little flat was like I was never I never cared about Colin. And yeah. part of it is the writing, but like part of it is also like you bring your like the, the character was never brought to light in a way that was engaging to me. Right. And. And Newman is not that. Sage is not that. There's a, uh, you know, Firecracker is not that. They they are engaging, and and they it's not because they got the best lines. One thing that, I will say about, sorry, go ahead. Oh no no you good. Um, one thing I will say about the boys is, um, they do a phenomenal job with their female characters, more so than I think any other superhero. Uh, show or movie i've ever seen they do such i love mave um starlight is a little bit lame this season but overall love her um love newman love sage um even firecracker is like even like the villains firecracker um stormfront a pleasure to watch they're so entertaining i yeah i think i think I mean, they girls, they cool, they do all right. You know what I'm saying? They do, you know, for girls, they be all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's, let's... it's like, like in a world where like there's Wonder Woman. Wonder I never thought, like I never had any desire to see her movies. I think I saw one and I thought it was so boring. Um, so like in that world, like the fact that this like cynical, satirical superhero show has like the best female char- female superheroes is like, it's just fascinating to me. It is, and I and I enjoy that they have, like the depth of the characters that the that that the the women have in uh, this series. Like, there's they're multi dimensional. You know, they're layered, yeah. and and I I do appreciate that because not they're not always you know, like you said, Wonder Woman, not so compelling. You know, yeah. parts of the movies are, but on the whole, like, it's not that compelling. Uh, but they do a good job with the women in this, where they were, where I actually care about their stories. Uh, I'm not bored. I'm not, it's not a bathroom break when the chicks come on screen. Yeah. You know, for sure. it's like, 
like that most of most of the time that's the can't miss parts of the show mm-hmm. more than like like when the deep comes on i will go get myself a glass of water <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's straight up uh deep's on I'm, I'm gonna go get some water i don't really care about what this doing when frenchie's on i don't really care what this guy's doing yeah i exactly. go i go i do what i gotta do real quick i can i can miss this next five minutes i'll be straight yeah um yep Let's let's get to let's let's get to Homelander and Ryan. Uh, and wait, that, so that about rappers. Just one thing. Um, wait, we have to talk about. Okay, let's do Noir, Firecracker, and then Homelander. Um, because we cannot skip Firecracker. That last. And, <laughs> and we can't skip Noir either. Yes, yes, yes. I was gonna bring Firecracker in with the Homelander. Yes, that was that was. <laughs> let's start. Let's, let's start with her. Um, I still think that she is terrible. Oh yeah, she's um, a she horrible is, thing. <laughs> she is, she is Michael Scott levels of cringy. Uh, you but, gonna cut that out too? That no. was an old reference. No, well, yeah, yeah but it's still relevant. <laughs> but okay, but she solidified her place on the team at the end of this episode. She did. Holy she absolutely shit. did. That was that was so gross. <laughs> the way they like. They shot a water gun of milk. Like they they turned the camera to his face and then they like had a camera, uh, sorry, a water gun behind the camera filled with milk. And they just how many takes did they do of just shooting water milk into his face? And then have, he had this like surprised look on. Like how many takes did that take? <laughs> Man, I guess it would depend on uh, if if he himself is really into milk because <laughs> it might be like yeah, give me another one of those. It's possible. I've heard he's a psychopath. Like I've heard, I've heard he's not dissimilar to his character. Uh, yeah. After watching like all those promotional things they did, uh, hyping up this season, and like seeing what he looks like, not as Homelander, uh, yeah. not not less psychotic, not <laughs> less psychotic at all. <laughs> Just completely different psychotic. Yeah, yeah. That oh goatee is serious. What a scene. I was almost happy with Homelander. I was like, he's home. Mommy's home. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He had never been, like, when <laughs> when he got squirted in the face with milk, I don't think I've ever seen that dude happier in four seasons of this show. For real. But you know what's interesting? Sister Sage, like, or sorry, Sage actually predicted this um, because, remember, she's in the elevator with Ashley, and she's telling her, like, you better get some milk going otherwise he's gonna kill you <laughs> but even oh if she... wow yeah <laughs> but like even with the milk there's a, still a very high chance he's gonna get pissed off at her and kill her anyway <laughs> yeah. like he did with so well in season one <laughs> what a but psycho she's... uh she's in it to win it baby you gotta, you gotta applaud the loyalty and and the depth she was willing to go to. Like she knew exactly what she had to do to yep. make sure that she had a place on this team. Like she knew once they opened the door for her, she was like, "Bitch, I I go here now." Yeah, and the way he just like completely, he was like, "You did this for me," and then just like it's... completely reverted to a little boy after, yeah, after everything he did this season it was just. Wow. Insane. She's the most powerful member of the seven at this point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one that bringeth the milk definitely yeah. sits closer to the head of the table. Yep. Yeah, she definitely and if you're doing power rankings, like she definitely slid in front of Sage by the end of episode six with Sage's, you know, brain damage and 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 that fall apart in front of all those rich people, uh, that lowered her down in Homelander's eyes. While wow, this chick just brought milk to fucking dinner, like let's go. Yeah. Like you are now, you are now. I'm going to listen to you over anybody else now, because you are mommy. Yeah, yeah. And mommy's man. always on top. Sage, man, you you got to catch up. What the fuck happened? Because I th that wasn't in her calculations. I don't believe anywhere in her mind did was she like did she account for the possibility of her getting shot in the head 
before yeah. the most important meeting of the of the season for her. She didn't handle that confrontation well. Like, why was she bringing up his daughter? Why didn't she just leave? Like, what did she have to lose in that whole thing? She could have just left and said she didn't see anything. Right, because it's not like she can fight. So what were you doing? Right, yeah. You're, I don't you're pissing it. this dude off. Like, that was... I think I think that hubris will be her downfall. Yeah, for sure. And once again, you can't outsmart brute force. Like, the man had a gun in his hand. Like, you, you can't outsmart that. Yeah, you can't outfake a bullet. Right, exactly. Um, okay, so Black Noir, it was nice to see that fine-ass actor. Um, I know him from Ginny and Georgia. He's the sexy dad on that show. And now, and I, I knew he was, he's always been noir. Like, he's the actor that was always in the suit. Um but it's nice to see his face. <laughs> oh, this is this is some self-serving bullshit here. That's what this is. <laughs> it's also kind of fun, like when you see like a guy who's like kind of a sex symbol on one show, and then he's like kind of a goofball on another. Like it's just kind of it's fun to see the actor's rage. Yeah, because uh, uh, man, I pretty much had wrote noir off and yeah. i mean especially with, with us not seeing him at all in episode five and not until the end of episode six like he was i was like this like he, he was written off and then he was he had wrote himself off he was like i'm gonna go play in a play i'm gonna be an actor on broadway i have to go and and i guess the deep is gonna convince him to stick around but brother you should have ran you should have you should have went and took the other gig. Yeah. Because it's not gonna it's not gonna end well for him. Like, and it, like the whole I can fly. Yeah, we know you can fly. It's like let let that brother fly. Yeah, why, for real. The, he needs. Why to go. are why are that why is it important that why is this why is he even there? That's what I don't understand. Is why can't Noir just be dead? Who are you trying to fool? Why can't he not be there? What what is the, why is this guy necessary to pretend to be noir? Like what is the purpose? I think it's just like too much instability in the seven. Like they're still trying to portray like this public image. Because Starlight left, Maeve faked her death, <laughs> Noir died. So it's like I think it's just too much turmoil. It's like they're trying to save face. Man, then they played it wrong, because if you'd have just said Noir died you know, in that whole incident, then he's a hero right now. Yeah, that's true. But you're you're masquerading him around like he's still here. And yeah. then he's gonna die for what? He's gonna he's gonna die a death that doesn't make him any more of the hero that they would have thought he was before. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wasn't yeah. a hero, but but they definitely have uh like just like A Train, if you had to just let this brother die like he would his his legacy would have been what it is but keeping him around keep keeping this dude like how does this enhance what is what is the purpose of this dude being here um so i don't under, under, i don't understand over under he's going to survive this season cuz he knows uh, too much like he he's he's got He's so die. dead. Yeah. He's he's so dead. But it yeah. would be just like the boys that through sheer luck he's the last one standing. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> and at and at that point, he's been beat the fuck up, and now he can't speak. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's not looking good for for noir noir two point oh. <laughs> it was nice to see his face. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, you know what? I, but it was a little unsettling because when he when I saw him on the screen, I was like, oh, how you got this pretty motherfucker playing? <laughs> <laughs> but he's been noir season one. Like this is noir. Okay. I did not know that that was, until you said it, I didn't know that that was the guy, the actor that's been playing him this whole time, but, uh, which makes it even more hilarious that yeah. he can play <laughs> that same character in both of these different ways. <laughs> um, yeah, he must be having a blast right now. Seriously. Uh, uh, Homelander, Ryan, and then Butcher. Um, man. He is making another Homelander. 
I didn't think he was going to be able to do it with Ryan. I did think that was going to be, I didn't think that was possible, but watching him when he had that chick slapping the director over and over again. Yep. He got him. He, he, he got him in that moment. And if Butcher doesn't save Ryan by the end of this season, which let's be honest, I don't think he is. Right. But if he doesn't save him by the end of this season, he's lost him. Yeah, Ryan's got to go. R.I.P. Ryan. No, he's not going to go though. He's he's he is going to he's going to be too far gone. Though he'll be too far gone if they don't take care of him by the end of this season. And their only hope of beating Homelander is with Ryan. So I'm very interested to see how they're going to put this together and and how and how this is going to shake out because if it's homelander and ryan then there's that then that's unstoppable i'm sorry they're, you're not they're not going to beat this you can bring back four or five damn uh soldier boys if you want to but they're not they, that's not going to be a, enough they gotta they, they gotta get ryan on to, to against homelander somehow but i don't know if it's possible I mean, how did Butcher fumble this so badly? Because all Homelander did was show him a tiny bit of love and acceptance, and Ryan was good to go. Good After to a whole good. lot of bad. I mean, right. three episodes right. ago, Ryan was ready to jet three episodes ago. Right. But his ego is so fragile, and he's young, so he can he's very malleable, and these are very impressionable years for somebody who's coming into their own with their powers and you let that slip through your fingers and into the hands of the guy who, who is the absolute worst. Like, you know, when, when, uh, Sh Samir said to butcher, uh, you are the people that we don't want to have it. You know, like they, right. the, the hands that we don't want it to get into. Right. Yeah. Um, Homelander is that with Ryan. You are, he is the person that you don't want him to have. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> like that's the that is the though he those are the hands that you don't want Ryan falling into, to him to become the Homelander 2.0, but probably stronger, probably a better version of Homelander. You I fucked up. I am curious. Yeah, Butcher is fucking useless. But what has Butcher ever done anything like? No, right? Like if anything, it's like A Train. <laughs> I feel like A Train, Huey. Oh shit! I've been saying Stewie this whole time. A Train, Huey, and Starlight, like though that trio together have done way more shit than like Butcher has done. What has Butcher done besides get his own wife killed? That that's harsh. First of all, get get his that's <laughs> what has he done besides get his wife killed? Damn, uh, you're mean. Uh... Imagine being married to me, dude. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. I don't even want to imagine it. I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Um, <laughs> what has Butcher done? I, hold on. Uh, no. 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 Yeah. What he, has he, done? Done. he has I can't. I can't really. Positive? I know I can name a whole bunch of bad shit he's done. Yeah. Uh, I can name a whole lot of but like I mean the like okay season one um ends with him not killing Homelander but getting or not killing Stillwell but getting blamed for killing Stillwell <laughs> season two is his wife dies and she tells him to protect Ryan and then season three he doesn't protect Ryan and then he lets out Soldier Boy and then puts Soldier Boy back in the cryo chamber. And also uh, put poison in his body that is now going yeah, to kill him. That's killing him. What has he done? <laughs> what a useless character! He got his he got his aunt's house destroyed by Black Noir. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone loves this guy. This is the most useful, useless title character of all time. He is a limey twat. He's. I don't know if title characters are right. Uh, uh, verbiage but like he's the face of the show and he's absolutely fucking useless he did bring huey in 
yeah and and that was it he did, he did that um uh the time that huey got thrown into the van and he got the shrapnel in him he shot that dude and they stole his car well that's cute <laughs> I'm trying here. I'm grasping at straws. I'm trying. I'm thinking of things he did that was good. Uh, yeah, you're right. He's he... not even things that were good. Things that like align with his general goal. Nothing. <laughs> besides, besides create the problems that they have to solve. Right. He's done a lot of create. Like he's yeah. he's job security. He's the ultimate job security. He's like me at my job. I'm only there because I create job security for everybody cleaning up after me. I feel like the only positive thing this team has done is um, like a train bringing information to Huey and Starlight and then them making it public. I think that's it. There's been nothing else. A <laughs> train's a bigger hero than. <laughs> that's subject. That's subjective. That's subjective. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> how many how many innocent people has Butcher killed? Way more than A Train, if we're being honest. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> He's killed a lot of bad people. <laughs> and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> um oh wait, here's one uh that we that we can't let slip. Sam. Sam and uh Kate. Kate. They they show up this episode. And they show up in the Seven Tower. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're full on baddies. Do you do we are we gonna see them play a larger role this season or or are we waiting for after the Guardians of Godulkin break out to uh see how how see them get involved? Um, yeah, I, th I think that's all we're going to see of them. I don't, I don't expect much more. Okay. Is there going to be a Gen V season two between, uh, seasons four and five? For sure. I would imagine so. Okay. Well then I'm very much looking forward to that. In fact, I'm wondering, cause Gen V came out last year, right? Yes. Oh yeah. So it's, it almost seems like they're alternating now. Gen V one year. The boys next year, Gen V next year, maybe the boys se season five the year after. Maybe. Uh, I'm just I, well, I'm glad that they made so many references to it uh, in these two episodes. Yeah, yeah especially I mean, in episode six. It's hardly a spinoff. Like, it's basically the same show. Yeah, just a different region, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that, but, I, and Sam and Kate's presence, uh, on episode six kind of, uh, got me excited for what we could be seeing in the future. Yeah. A little, little bit of foreshadowing. Um, and to be honest, I kind of want to see, uh, I think Sam is hella strong. I think Sam is hella strong, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind seeing. I would. I would kind of like to see him and Homelander go at it. Probably not going to, but I. W I wouldn't mind seeing it. Sam and Homelander. I mean, yeah, I'd like to see Homelander <laughs> whip Sam's dumbass for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that, would <be> cute. <laughs> that would be cute. Oh um, Lord. Okay, uh, let's see. We were, we were on Butcher. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. That Look, we, like, we, we figured this out, like, two episodes ago. You and I, like, on our podcast, figured out that the tumor was going to be, like, a soup tumor with its own powers. Uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned Venom, that this might be a Venom situation. That seems to be exactly what it is. And then mm -hmm. we didn't speculate on Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character on our podcast, but literally every other podcast figured it out that Jeffrey Dean Morgan was imaginary. So this was not a big reveal. 
And the fact that they waited till the end of the episode and had like flashback scenes to clarify was just completely unnecessary. We all knew, we all figured it out by the by this point that the tumor has a life of its own, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan isn't real. I it I was underwhelmed. Um, I. Uh, would like to reserve the right to pass judgment on it until uh, I see what they do with it. But it, to use your words, it was cute, <laughs> and yeah. I was it. I was I'm okay with it because this dude's gonna die. He's he's gotta die. And if they had told. You know, it's a storytelling device the way they they did it, and they chose to do it in that way, and that's cool. Look, the sixth sense was like twenty years ago. They're still trying to make it seem like a surprise. (laughs) Like they really tried to do a big reveal, as if we hadn't figured, as if this hasn't been a plot device for the last two decades. Come on now, you you expected. I'm going to say that a very large portion of the audience that views this didn't see the sixth sense. These are also the same people that have never heard the thong song. They're out there. They exist. And they're in their 20s. Some of them, their mind was blown. And let's let them have it. There, no no minds were blown. Absolutely not. Because this younger generation, they know. They know all the all the stuff. Uh. I think you are overestimating <laughs> this their their cultural awareness. No, I've, I've, I've had, I'm if I'm telling you, I if if not from the Sixth Sense, from every other show or movie that's copied the Sixth Sense, and from every podcast reviewing the boys, they knew, we all knew. This okay, was then, yeah. <laughs> I, I was cool with it. Uh, yes, we knew what it was, but I thought it was a good it was a good way to spend the episode with Butcher. I, for me, I was fine with it. He wasn't involved in any of the action that was going on. He's going through his own thing, and this was a uh, a fine enough way to tell us what was going on with Butcher. Yeah. I was cool with it. I was cool with it. I wasn't turned off or offended by it. Yes, it's a trope that's been done before, but damn it, I've seen a lot of forms of entertainment that have been rehashed over and over again, and people continue to love them even though it's been done to death. Okay. Don't don't believe me. Go 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 to a black comedy show in any city near you. I swear to God, you're gonna see a whole lot of rehashed old tropes. Yeah, yeah. What it is happens. it? Um... Sleeping with older women, I've noticed, is like a, a thing. <laughs> what? Okay. Sleeping with older women. Okay, I might cut this part out. Um, it, it seems to be like a trope with like younger black male comics, I've noticed. Well, we've all done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've all done it. That's my, that's my favorite trope. Hold on. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I had to turn the car on uh, so I could charge my phone and just wanted to make sure that you could hear me in the headphones still. Yeah, you're good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that trope, though. It, it's okay. Yeah. I'm not I'm not offended by it. Yeah. Don't connect. Uh, so, you have any predictions for episode seven? Um, the new, no, why don't you go ahead with your predictions? Um, I think we see Sage try to get revenge Mm -hmm. because when her brain does heal, she's going to remember what happened. Um, I'm curious. Like as much as Homelander is into this whole titty milk thing with Firecracker, he was probably about to laser her ass for letting Starlight go. Oh, for sure. And he's petty enough that 
if she doesn't stay ready with the milk and on his good side. She doesn't stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, she is, like, as you said earlier, she's the most powerful member now that she's the one, the tit that he's sucking on. Mm -hmm. But also, he's unhinged, and he gave her a reason to not trust her. Right. And then he gave her titty milk. But before that, he gave her a reason to not trust her because he's paranoid and you let Starlight get away. Right. I, I think that that might come back at some point. Um, I think we're going to see some. I think I think episode seven, Sage is going to take center stage. That's what yeah. I'm looking forward to. Oh, looking forward to that for sure. For sure. Sage and Newman. That's what I'm looking forward to for the rest of the season. Ooh, and Stewie's mom coming out as a spy. I can't wait. Those I three things. Wait. Do you think Sage and Newman are going to partner up? Like maybe she, Sage, because she knows she fucked up with Homelander, maybe she strikes a deal with Newman? Because she's, she's the type that needs protection because she can't protect herself physically. I mean, I think she'll try, but I, I just don't see how you can protect yourself from Homelander's wrath. Like, nobody has so far. You pop his head. Yeah, but we don't. We haven't established that Newman can pop his head. We haven't established that Newman can't pop his head. Yeah, but I'm saying it, like, I, it might not be that simple. I feel like there's got to be some plot armor around Homelander that's keeping him from being vulnerable to other soups. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very interested to see what they work out. Cause, and to be honest, oh, here we go. Hold on one second. All right, so Newman lost her guy making the virus. She's mm -hmm. lost the virus. Sage just told her that she made a cure for cancer and could reverse global warming, mm -hmm. which means Sage can create a virus that could kill all soups. But the thing is, Newman doesn't want that. Butcher is the one that wants that. Then why was Newman running experiments and tests with it then? She wants it for something. That's true. She had a, she had a reason for doing research and experimenting. She had a reason for taking the, the virus to begin with. And... Yeah. If she can convince Sage to help her with that, then Sage can convince her to protect her, and then maybe they work together in some in some fashion that way. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. So I'm looking for those two to further their relationship. Yeah. And yeah. and so those are the things I'm looking for. Sage Sage is gonna take center stage. In these next two episodes, one way or another. No, I I sure hope so. That would be that would be awesome. My two favorite characters. Yeah, I, that's what I'm looking forward to. I think that's my prediction. That's my prediction. Yeah. And go. Stewie's mom's a fucking snitch. Fuck yeah! But I want her to snitch. I want her to. Oh, snitch. I want. I her called to him Stewie. Destroy her son. <laughs> you did it too. Yeah, because know. of you. I've been calling him you as well. Didn't, and then you stopped calling him Stewie, and I started. Listen, it's late, dude. Um, let's uh, let's sign off so you can get some sleep on your road trip. Um, any final thoughts? Uh, no, that was it. That, that's where that's where I'm at. I'm looking for Sage to take center stage, and uh, and I'm looking for a strong finish to season four. Hell yeah. Episodes at once. Fuck, you gave us both episodes. And then you gave us two at the beginning of the season to start. Give us, give us the last two all at once. All right. Signing off. <laughs>